Okay, so what do you think this is? Any guesses? It says fragile. Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. I've been looking for a way to add T5 bulbs to my existing Kessel AP700 for probably, I would say almost a year now. When I first started looking, there wasn't much out there and what was available was not only expensive, but bulky and inconvenient. Then a few months ago, I saw a posting on a Facebook group by Larry Sai. He had come across some hydroponic light fixtures and put together a system to use with his LEDs. And as soon as I saw it, I knew that's exactly what I needed. Larry very kindly gave me all the information I needed to buy these things and they were available in Canada, which is a real bonus for me. They were also really reasonably priced. $165 got me the two lights I needed, plus a timer, plus a way to hang them. Because they're meant to grow plants, the bulb that comes with them is a 6400K Daylight White. Now, I have no plans to try and grow algae in my aquarium, so I'm going to take that out of each fixture. And after looking for some advice from Billy Pipes, the ultimate T5 power user, I decided on Superactinic from Geisman. Including the cost of the bulbs, total price for both lights was under $250 Canadian. Here's the hanging system. It's a set of two plastic brackets. Each end of the light fixture snaps into a groove on the underside of the brackets. It's also complete with hooks to hang these things up. All I had to do was buy some wire. Very impressed with this, it was only 15 bucks. I put links in the description for both the US and Canada on where you can get these things. So if you're interested in following up, you should be able to start there. So aside from the light fixture, what else is in the box? Well, there's a couple of power cords, including the six footer, and there's also these brackets. These are intended, from what I can tell, for use inside a hood or a canopy. From looking at these, the light can be mounted either from above or from the side facing in. I had no use for these, but you might, depending on your application. One really great thing is the daisy chain power cord is included. Each fixture has one. So this is how you hook multiple lights together. And this power cord is at least six feet long, which is awesome. It operates using an inline roller switch. I also ordered this digital timer, which I can program for consistent on-off times as I start with a short photo period and gradually ramp that up. I'm pumped about being able to find such a simple, accessible solution to something I really thought would be very expensive or very inconvenient for me to implement with my lighting system. After a quick trip to the hardware store, we gathered a bunch of stuff to use for hanging and we're good to go. Here it is assembled. This plastic bracket has the fixtures snapped up into it from underneath, and these hooks are great. They hang vertical or pretty much whatever angle you need. The fixtures themselves are labeled at each end showing input and output, so it makes it very easy to set up the cords. We hook the lights together at this end using the cord supplied. One thing I will note is that this little cord is precisely the right length to allow for the width of my Kessel fixture in between the two lights. The bracket is slightly wider than that and I've put the excess of the bracket so that it will be at the back of the fixture when it's hung up over my tank. We're pretty much good to go. All the measuring has been done and holes are about to be drilled. Then we'll get this thing hung up and see how things look. Here it is hung over the tank. You can see I've arranged it so the power cord comes out the back left and I'm going to plug it into the drawer here in an extra space I have in my power bar. Coming across, it looks very, very sleek and clean. At the right hand end is where I've joined the two lights together using this cord and I'm really pleased with how tidy this looks. We were able to fit this fixture 
quite neatly underneath the existing cord from the Kessel. And what would a Reef Girl project be without a wrinkle? It turns out I could not plug this timer directly into the power bar that was in my drawer because of the position of the grounding post. So I picked myself up some short adapter cords and these ones are lighted which is really cool because this is going to be in a drawer and it's a very quick way for me to look at them and make sure that they're actually turned on. I put links in the description for where you could find these. Oh my god. I don't need a magnifying glass to read these instructions. What a concept. Here we are all programmed, plugged in, and ready to go. I have it set up so that it runs for one hour per day, and I'm adding 10 minutes at the end of that hour every day. Here's some footage of a strawberry shortcake under LED plus T5 and LED only. Now I don't have this coral anymore because of the disaster I had in my tank when I messed up with the lighting. If you're interested in the details of that disaster, check out my Point and Shoot Tuesday video starting with episode one. It explains everything that happened and what the consequences were. That disaster was because of my error. Well, not because of the T5 lighting, but because of what I did with it. I'm still confident the T5s will make a huge difference in my tank. I've revised the lighting schedule to start with one hour per day. Every week, I plan to add 10 minutes and we'll see where that goes. The tank is already starting to look better after only one week of this. So I'm gonna be more sensible when it comes to the T5s, not make rash decisions, and hopefully, eventually things will come back. This footage is from October the 6th and I'm really hoping that it's a good example of the way things are turning around in my tank. One thing I didn't mention in the other part of the video was salt creep. I've got these T5s mounted approximately 14 inches above the water. If you decide to use something like this, you may need to consider a barrier of some type. If you have yours closer to the water than that, or perhaps mounted in a canopy or a hood, you might want to think of a way to keep salt creep at bay. I don't really need to do that because I think they're high enough above the water, but I am certainly going to be watching out for it. One further thing I thought you might like to see is the difference between what the tank looks like with the Kessel running and what it looks like without, with just the T5s. It looks really dull. There's no shimmer. Now, this is very blue because all it is is superactinic. Those are the only two bulbs that I have in here. But still, it's very, very flat. And, I don't know, I much prefer to see it with the shimmer and the addition of the Kessel. So, I'm going to switch that back on now. And we're back. So much more life and movement with that shimmer. In conclusion, I do not regret adding these T5s to my Kessel AP700. I think they're going to make an amazing difference. So thanks so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. And if you decide to add T5s to your light fixture, please don't make the same mistake I did.